Are you looking for something that's totally safe to use in your coop and around your house to repel pests? Well, we have discovered the most amazing product called Fur Saturday Lime, and it is safe to use around your fur, feather, and human babies around your home and in, like Bev said, in your chicken coops, stables, and barns. And we actually even use it in our duck ponds. And by ponds, I mean pools because we're cheap like that. But we sprinkle a little bit in there and it actually helps keep the funk down. Yeah. For Saturday Lime is so useful, like regardless of what kind of animals you have or how many you have. It helps keep smells down, helps keep flies down, helps keep pests down. Like this is a product that you definitely want to be using every first Saturday. Make sure you go to firstsaturdaylime.com and check it out. And then when you buy it, make sure you use hashtag drink when you check out to get 10% off. And you can use that hashtag every time you check out and buy First Saturday Lime. Because remember, you want to buy at least one bag a month because you want to lime every month. What are you waiting for? Go do it right now. Meow. Meow. <laughs> <laughs> I almost said right Meow. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Sam. Hey, Bev. How's it going? It's so hot. Oh, yeah, it's hot as balls. It's so hot, I feel like I'm dying. Oh, yeah, just like very slowly and Ooh, surely. Oh, that was a good one, too. Yeah, we both made good sounds this time. We're, we're getting the hang of this podcast thing. <laughs> <laughs> we're getting the hang of opening beer on podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's, that's a little more specific, yes. <laughs> can you get paid to do something like that? Because if you can um, get paid to do something like that, I want this to be my job. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I guess some people just do, you know, podcasts for a living. Um, I just don't know if they open beers while they do it or not. So that might be more <laughs> like a niche thing. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I don't know either. Is that how you pronounce that word? For some reason, yeah. I always say niche, and I know that that's wrong. I think people say it both ways, like niche or niche. Yeah. Okay. Niche certainly sounds fancier. Niche. Yes. Niche sounds. <laughs> it sounds like I know what I'm talking about, and maybe I don't. <laughs> <laughs> well, like, I guess, yeah, it doesn't have a T in it, so I don't know why I say niche. Because it's like the CH thing. I think it kind of throws it off oh, for some reason. Oh, is I my see guess. That. Like rich, niche. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Got it. Oh, okay. <laughs> now I'm like seeing words in my head. <laughs> or like the heat is getting to us and we're just going to talk about the stupidest shit during this podcast. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> I think that's what every episode so, is right now. That's okay. <laughs> so uh, what are you drinking over there? So I'm drinking a Three Floyds beer and it's called Gumball. Ooh. Yeah. And I don't know. People go ape shit here over Three Floyds uh, Zombie Dust, which is an IPA. And I actually mm. do have some of that in the fridge, but it's my husband's special beer, so he's not home still, so I didn't want to steal it <laughs> and drink it <laughs> for the podcast. But I was at one of our rural party stores. It's not a gas station. It's not a convenience store. It's literally just like a tiny pole barn that you can buy beer at. That's awesome. And they have this. So I was like, hey, I'm going to grab this. And it was brewed in Monster, Indiana. I was trying to find something that was brewed in Indianapolis since we were talking about Coop Camp. And I was like, ooh. But yeah. uh, this is the closest I could find to an Indianapolis beer. So did I think you it did say good. Monster Indiana? Well, it's spelled M-U-N-S-T-R, S-T-E-R, Munster. <laughs> yeah, I think it's Munster. Like, Munster, like the TV Monster. show. Like oh. the Munsters. Yeah. Munster. Yes. I don't know how Monster. to pronounce anything. See, Ben can't is... read either. <laughs> Which is really funny because I just like Googled it. And <laughs> Munster is right not next to Lansing, Indiana. And I work in Lansing, Michigan. So oh. I don't know why I think that's fun in my brain, but it is. It's like small world. It is. It is a small world. And I love how all of these Midwestern states have cities that are all the same in all of their states. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it makes life very interesting. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so what are you drinking? So I'm actually on beer number three today, which is probably not smart, um, but I'm double fisting right now. The one thing I have in here is a Gatorade. 
And then the other thing I have in here is a, a beer called Drunk <laughs> Drunks, Jesus, called Dragons and Yum Yums. And oh. it's by uh, Dogfish Head. Doghead Fish? Dog Dogfish fish? Head Brewing Company. Yeah. Yes. That My one. husband had that at, where were we? Uh, it doesn't matter. We were out eating somewhere. And he <laughs> ordered that. And I looked at him and I was like, did you just order the dragons and yum yum? And he's like, yeah, it says it's a tropical IPA. I think I'm going to like that. I'm like, no way. It's a fruit beer. You're going to hate it. And sure enough, he tried it and he's like, no, this is terrible. I was like, I think it's amazing. It's a great beer. Give it to me. <laughs> yeah, it says on the side, pale ale brewed with dragon fruit and yumberry, which uh, I didn't yes. even know like yumberry was a thing. But the art on the bottle was so cool that I just had to get it. <laughs> like the label's really fun because my husband and I had to go to the feed store this morning. And then he's like, well, we're out. Do you need anything else? I was like, mm, I should probably get some fun beer for recording with Bev today. Um, so I just don't end up drinking the same thing. <laughs> and then it's just too hot for wine, even like white wine for some reason. If it's like, oh, like it says it's 91 here, but feels like 101. Wine just doesn't sound very good, even if it's chilled right now. Yeah, I agree with that. I, I haven't had any beer yet today. I've been trying so hard to get stuff done before everybody comes home because they come home tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And so far, I'm just failing miserably. So I haven't had any beer. But this is a good break because it got me inside yes. from the heat. And now I can relax. And I've got all night to get stuff done. I mean, like, the sun doesn't go down until 10. So, Right. <sighs> That's true. Yeah, earlier. I had one of these earlier. And then I also had a, what else did I have? A Sam Adams Porch Rocker, which is really good, too. It's like a summer shandy that isn't super artificial tasting not that i'm knocking summer shandy but you know what i mean sometimes like for me summer shandy i can only have like one or two and then it kind of tastes it. like fruit pebbles to me really summer shandy does yeah oh i could see i could see that yeah so i i know what you're talking about that that artificial taste yeah yeah i, I, I can totally see that but speaking of fruity pebbles i had the best donut this past week at work our program manager brought us donuts from the donut shop in Lansing and it legitimately had fruity pebbles in the icing and it was delicious. Oh my gosh, that sounds so good. <laughs> <laughs> it was like the that was probably contained like all of the sugar that I needed for like a whole week in that one donut, but it was awesome. <laughs> yeah, there's no shame in that. When donuts that are covered in cereal come around, like you have to eat them. Yes, you do. And I'll I'll make up for your donut eating by only eating corn for dinner tonight because sweet go. corn has come on here Yay. in Ohio. And I was so excited. I went to the Mennonites and I bought two dozen of them. I'm like, nobody's home. What am I going to do with these two dozen years of corn? I'm like, I'm eating nothing but corn for dinner. <laughs> Aw. Well, you could like cook it and feed it to your chickens, couldn't you? Oh, yeah. Or I could give it to. But... I was going to say I could give it to him raw, too. You know, like just like shuck mm, him and, mm -hmm. and give him a couple cobs to like play with. Yeah, they would. Yeah, they'd totally do that. I haven't done that before, though. I guess like because I'm so excited by like sweet corn from the Mennonites. I never thought to like share them with the chickens because, <laughs> you know, like it only comes around like once a year and it's a right. really big deal. <laughs> yeah. Do you guys grow corn up there? Oh, Yeah. But I'm not a huge fan of corn on the cob because I don't like how it feels when it gets stuck in my teeth. So, oh, like, yeah. my mom will, like, she used to cut it off of the cob and I'll eat it that way. But, yeah, I have to be in the right mood to want to have it off of the cob. When my husband was younger, they used to have corn for dinner where, like, corn would be the main dish and then there'd be, like, some sides. I had never heard of that. Really? That's why, yeah, we'd do that too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I never like had any desire to do that because like they don't grow like, or at least they didn't when I was growing up, like good sweet corn in Southern California. So that wasn't something that we did because, you know, like the sweet corn that you get at the grocery store, it's good, but it's like not nearly as good as like the local stuff that you pick up right. at like yeah. the farmer's market or if you can grow it yourself. I don't know. My neighbors tell me here not to bother growing corn because they said the raccoons will get it first. Oh. Um, yeah. I had planned on it, but uh, it's probably a little late now. I, I didn't get a lot of stuff done this year. 
maybe next year <laughs> yeah we have it, it'll probably pop up soon i would think but there's this corn cart it i can't remember if it's literally just called the corn cart but it's like a mile maybe a little more from our house every summer they just park it there and it has like its own twitter feed but you can just go and like put money there somewhere i guess i don't know and just picks them up we haven't done it yet but i thought that was pretty cool i think they have like a couple of them that they put around the area and it's a good way to make money yeah that is a good way to make money and you know i've seen things like that around i've never stopped at any and i've seen a few people on instagram do that with eggs mm, they'll like mm-hmm. have you know like a cooler set up like at the bottom of their driveway or something and people can just like drop money in an envelope like into a bucket or, you know, like a box that's sealed yeah. and they just open it up and take a dozen eggs. Yeah. It's kind yeah. of clever. I th- we've been thinking about doing that just because we have so many right now. <laughs> yeah, that's, I mean, it's a good way to sell your eggs and not have to, like, deal with the face-to-face interaction of having people, like, come up to your house. I remember last year, before my chickens were laying, I was getting my eggs from one of the Mennonite markets that I go to, and I went to one specifically for them because I liked them because they weren't refrigerated, so I could, you know, just, like, Mm. leave them out on the counter like Mm -hmm. we do with our eggs. And when I went there to get some once, she's like, oh, we don't have any anymore because the guy from the health department came in and said that we couldn't sell eggs that way. Are you freaking kidding me? So they didn't have any eggs. So I was like, what am I going to do for eggs? So I was like, uh, I'll, on my way home, I'll just see one of those fresh egg signs and I'll pull up to somebody's house and I'll buy some. I did not see one sign on my way home. And I'm like, did this inspector <sighs> just like drive through my entire county and tell people that they couldn't sell their eggs? I don't know <sighs> that that's what happened, but I thought it was super weird that like in August, nobody had eggs. So unless chickens molt here in August, which I guess they might. Uh, I don't think uh... so, though. I think that seems a little early. Yeah. My chickens will probably molt when yours do. Yeah. Gosh, what a dickhead. <laughs> right. Uneducated dickhead. I'm sure yeah. there's probably some rule book he's, like, got to follow. Right. Like, super generalized. Like, oh, he's just get... doing his job. Right. But dick. <laughs> <laughs> it was funny because it's just, like, this little old Mennonite lady. She's like, yeah, he said we couldn't sell eggs at room temperature. I was like, Ugh. that's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. But, I mean, there is still, like, some, I mean, there is still some debate out there that I've heard about, like, how you're supposed to store your fresh chicken eggs. Yeah. Which I I had not realized that until uh, I heard another podcast on this subject. I can't remember which one. Um, But, yeah, I didn't realize that there was confusion over that. (laughs) But there are still some people that won't leave them at room temperature. Yeah. I mean, I have a ton of them on my counter right now, and... I sell them that way, and I explain to my customers why we can do that. So I haven't had any problems. I'm not saying that problems couldn't happen, but I think, you know, there also could be problems with the ones you buy in the store that are like 40, 50 days old. So there's that too. Yep. But anyways, do we have any housekeeping we need to tend to? We do have some housekeeping because we have shirts. Woo! Yeah, buddy. You can sing it like the shot song. Shirts, 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 shirts. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, that works. <laughs> I feel like I would end up saying shit, 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 shit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's what our next shirt should say on it. <laughs> shit. <laughs> and have like a picture of goat poo, a picture of like chicken poo. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. It could just say like shit happens on it, really. Mm. So. It definitely yeah. does on a farm. But yeah, yes, we have shirts. Does. Yes, and, and they're super cute. You can buy them probably for just a couple more days after this podcast drops. I know like two podcasts in a row, I said that it was going to be a super short ordering window, and it is. And I finally got yeah. them up. They're not going to make it in time for the Naperville Ale Fest. So if you're going to the fest and you wanted to wear a shirt, I'm sorry, they won't make it in time for that. Uh, but they'll still make it in time for all of your fun summer farm chores. So we still decided to go ahead and do them. It just, Mm -hmm. it took longer than I thought it was going to, to get all the ducks in a row, I guess. (laughs) Yeah. Well, we'll be a little more prepared for the next, 
the next event now that we know. <laughs> yeah, it's learning how to like put all of that stuff together. And what's funny is like I'm not new to ordering shirts like because I ran that Girls Pine Out group. I ordered merch all the time. But we didn't want to end up having a bunch of shirts on hand. So rather right. than just ordering them and having them shipped here and then one of us shipping them out – Whenever you ordered one, we decided to go through Custom Ink and let them do the printing and the shipping and all of that stuff just because that's the least expensive way to get shirts to you guys. And it's the fastest and easiest because, like, we're trying to figure out how to dedicate our time properly to the things that we're doing. And sending out shirts didn't seem like one of those things we should be doing, like, ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. I mean... (laughs) I do all of the, like, little cups and cute shit that we sell in our store. I'm saying shit a lot today. I don't know why that's my word today. The word of the the day is shit. Ooh, maybe that can be the title of the podcast. (laughs) (laughs) The shit show. Um, But, yeah, it's it's amazing, like, how time-consuming just, like, like making something and then printing out the shipping label and packing it and setting up the USPS setup. Like it's like, it doesn't sound time consuming, but when you work full time and like have a real job and like have kids running around sometimes or whatever, like it's just, it adds up. It's like, I really don't mind, but it it does take time. Um, because I, I love sending this stuff to people and then seeing people post it on Instagram. Like it just, it makes it worth it. And it makes my heart so happy to know that people are willing to buy stuff from us already. And like, they're proud of it to the point where they were, will like share it on their feed. So I don't want you guys to think that I don't want to do it. (laughs) I'm just saying it is time consuming. (laughs) Yeah. Buy our glassware. Maybe someday we can have somebody else make the glassware, but I think it's kind of fun that Sam handmade it. I don't know. I think that makes it a little special right now. Yeah. Uh, But yeah, we're not big enough to like have manufacturing plants, like do things for us, but the shirts they were willing to do. So yeah, order a shirt. We'll make a couple bucks, which will help us pay for all this fun podcasting stuff and like keep making it for you guys um yeah. but otherwise yeah and if you don't want to buy a shirt another way to make sure that the podcast keeps going is to join our patreon page sometimes i Woo. feel like we push it a lot sometimes i feel like i'm not talking about it enough but yeah our patreon page is super great and helpful because of our patreon supporters we are able to do things like actually record and cut down on my editing time because we pay a company to use their software to record now which is so much better than the free stuff that we were using and like i don't know if you've noticed but like the sound is better i'm getting it done faster i don't know that's thanks to patreon and your two dollars is so important (laughs) to us go ahead sorry (laughs) i said i was just saying i've noticed (laughs) it's like i know editing is time consuming but i I feel like I'm hearing less grumbling via text from you. So I assumed it was going better. (laughs) Yep. (laughs) Good. Because, like, you know, we we have stuff to do. And we would much rather spend time bringing you guys more than one episode a week or making cool stuff for you that you can buy from us later. We're going to be making something cool for our Patreon supporters that supported us in the month of June. You know, and when it cuts down on editing time like that, it just frees us up to do more of the fun stuff. Yes, for sure. And uh, it's too late now to join our Patreon and get the cool thing that Sam's making for the Patreon contributors that were active in June. But you can still join now and then you'll already be on there for when we do something the next time in a couple of months. Yeah. I don't know what we'll do next. I don't know when it'll be, but... It'll be something cool. I have a few ideas. Yeah, see, Sam has all the ideas. Yeah, once we get off of here, I'll have to confirm the June one with you because it could be one of two things. So we shall figure that out. Fun. (laughs) Yeah, and to get swag, you have to be at the $5 level or over. But you get to be a part of the Patreon for a dollar or $2 a month. I think it still lets you in when you just give a dollar. But Yeah, I think so too. Um, I think that's all of my housekeeping. I actually can't remember what the last episode was about, so I don't know if I said anything incorrect. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I just listened to it a few days ago, but 
I feel like I feel like we didn't say anything too nuts though. No, I don't think so either. I just had my my pee corner, but Oh, that's yeah. right. Your pee corner was good. Are you gonna pee in the corner today? I don't know. I don't wanna beat a dead horse, so okay. I think I think I will stay out of the pee corner this week, but we'll <laughs> see. You never know. <laughs> It depends on where the conversation takes us. Exactly. Or where the beer takes us. Yeah, that too. Yeah. Because that happens sometimes. Yes, it does. Speaking of where beer takes us, we already kind of mentioned the Naperville Ale Fest. Oh, but yes. As a reminder to all of our lovely listeners, we will be at the Naperville Ale Fest in Naperville, Illinois, July 14th. Um, depending on which ticket type you buy... You can get it at noon or one, and then it goes till five. There are like 200 beer vendors there, and the beer list should go out shortly. So when you buy your tickets, just make sure like you check that you can receive email because you'll see the full beer list a couple days before. And then there's also food trucks. It looks like they have some cool tents this year that have different crazy stuff in it. Um, and it's absolutely gorgeous. It's in Frontier Park. It's a lot of fun. It will probably be hot as balls. Um, like today, but <laughs> the something I wanted to point out too, the only food you are able to bring into the ale fest with you is a pretzel necklace. So what you can do is take like some string or some twine or something and just stack a whole lot of pretzels on them. I've seen people put cheese on them or other snacks on them. As long as it's around your neck, you can have that in there so you can have a little snack for free. I've While seen beef jerky on that. some. Oh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> but you can do that. And I we always make pretzel necklaces. So, um, Bev, I got you and your husband covered. And yes. probably probably Tina, too. We should see if she's bringing anybody with her, too. But Oh, yeah. Good good call. And uh, Tina from Henny and Rue is going to be joining us, mm-hmm. which is pretty awesome. I'm so excited, especially after our interview with her, to actually meet her in person and see her real life face and not just like her Facebook face. Right. (laughs) Yes. Cause her Facebook face can't possibly be the same. No, (laughs) probably not. No, you know, we all look different on the internet. Like people are going to see me and be like, wow, Sam looks a lot different person because she's not taking the perfect like selfie angle (laughs) picture. (laughs) I tried to take a bad picture of when I woke up, but then it turned out that it was actually a really good picture. So I (laughs) redeemed myself by taking one after I was totally covered in goat poop. That one, that was a real like tired, like this is my farm face picture. But I thought you still looked good. good (laughs) You still looked good in my opinion. So I was beat. I was so beat that day. Oh. Yes. Yeah. That sounded like a very long day. <laughs> You've had a long week for, you know, for what was supposed to be like a relaxing all about Bev week. It sounds like it kind of kicked the crap out of you a little bit. Yeah, it did. And, you know, I think part of that is just like this pain in my leg. I'm sitting on a heating pad right now, which is like the only way that I can sit comfortably still. Oh, yeah, I wish, and I wish I knew what happens. Like, people keep asking me, like, oh, what happened? Like, did you injure it? Like, you know, because usually when suddenly you can't walk, it's because, like, something specific happened. But I think it's just a, it's a combination of we had that car accident, and then I didn't take mm. any breaks. And then, like, I was working out really hardcore before that car accident started, or before that car accident happened. And then I totally stopped. I, I like, I haven't turned on one of those videos again. Which is kind of crazy because that means that I'm still paying for that beach body membership and I haven't used it in like three months <laughs> or two Aww. months. I don't know how long it's been. I can't even keep track of time anymore. Uh, but yeah, no, the muscles just like locked up and turned off and decided that they didn't want to work anymore. Ugh. So like my leg was just like really stiff. I couldn't move it. I like couldn't move my hip around. And now I, I think I've got it so that I can move it. It just now it has to heal. It's super freaking sore from all of the oh. massaging and manipulating I had this week. I had four appointments this week related to my hip. Wow. So yeah, driving into town a lot kind of cut in on my relaxing week. But I still it got to have a lot like of fun. It. I went kayaking once and I went out to dinner with my friends a few times and we went bowling yesterday, but I didn't bowl because I can't actually throw <laughs> a 10 pound <laughs> ball. Like, you know, like on the opposite side of my hip, I, I didn't even want to risk it. I was like, no, I'm just going to sit and drink beer. Because yeah. I'm, I'm better at that anyways. 
I mean, you just have to know your strengths. That's important. <laughs> right. <laughs> you got to play into them. <laughs> Although it was funny. I didn't tell anybody this there, uh, but I used to actually be a really good bowler. When I was in college, I was on a bowling team because I lived in Flagstaff, Arizona, and there was nothing to do in Flagstaff. And I wasn't old enough to drink yet, so I couldn't go to the bars. And I was a smoker, so and you could smoke inside the bowling alley. And it was super cold there in the wintertime. So my friend and I were like, let's join a bowling team. Then we can smoke inside and have something to do. <laughs> and we did it. And we were actually really good. I bowled a 300 game once, once Whoa. in my entire life. Yeah, I know. And unfortunately, it was like before we had camera phones and whatnot. So I don't think I have any proof of that. But I know I did it, and I'll never, ever be able to do it again, ever, <laughs> in my entire life. But, like, I owned bowling shoes and, like, my own ball and everything. <laughs> oh, damn. But now yeah, I don't even tough. think I can break 100. <laughs> <laughs> so you're back to normal like the rest of us. <laughs> yes. Now I just drink beer, eat pizza, and hope I don't get in the gutter. There you go. That still sounds like a good time, just in a different way. It is. It's a great time. It's way more fun when you're not really worried about your score. Yeah. In my opinion. I don't know. My life is so weird. <laughs> hey, Bev. Do you think this is a good time to give a quick little shout out to our sponsor, Henny and Rue? Yeah, I sure do. They're like one of our favorite things in the chicken keeping world. Bev and I have been subscribers of the box way before we were able to get sponsored with them. And we really enjoy that all of the items that you get in this box from them, they're actually handpicked and tested out on the flock of the family that owns the Honey and Root brand. Which is super cool. So this box is put together like by chicken keepers for chicken keepers. And they try really hard to only include items that are both high quality and useful for you and your flock. So get on over to honeyandrew.com and you can use the discount code drink and farm to get 10% off of your monthly subscription for your very first box. And then you're able to get a discount for being kind of like a VIP after you subscribe. So you get a 10% discount on all items in the shop. And also not only does the box come with things like that are super cool for your chickens. They also throw in like a thing or two every month that's specifically for the chicken keeper. So you're not like just going to get things that are fun for your flock. You end up with fun things for yourself as well. Like one of my favorites is a little makeup bag that I got and then also a cool bracelet and they come up with yes. all sorts of fun things. Yes. So guys, go check it out. Boom. <laughs> Since it's been so hot, let's talk about how to keep the animals cool. All right. Yeah, let's do that. So with it being, well, with it feeling like 104, I don't understand what it would be like to be an animal outside right now because my cat wanted to go in earlier and he was just like, meow, meow, meow. and I'm like, yeah, dude, I wouldn't want to wear a fur coat either outside right now. So <laughs> I saw a kind of interesting concoction on your page today. Did you call it like a Grubbly's Rito? Uh, I called it, it a Grub, Grubito? Like a Grubito? Ooh. yeah, like a mojito, but with grubblies. Oh, because of the mint. Because of the mint. Oh. That's what I was going for. Yeah. You are so freaking clever <laughs> that I'm so mad that I just didn't even like pick up on that. See, and now I'm worried nobody else picked up on it either. So that's okay. It's only clever if people get it. But yeah, it's because I stuffed it full of mint. So I've done that two days in a row now, um, and all mm. the animals like it. Like. So it's just, I only have one bucket or I only have one big bucket like that that's near the house. I'm lazy. I'm not going to keep walking back and forth to the barn to get a bunch of different buckets. So no. I just get one bucket, fill it all the way up with ice, top it off with cold water. And then I have a, that big mint patch down in the front of my house and I just cut a bunch of mint sprigs out of it and stick it in there. And then I sprinkle whatever my like veggie scraps are that I have for the day. Like I think I had cucumbers today. Ooh. and um, the tops of some peppers. So I put those in there, and then I sprinkle some frozen corn, and then I put grubblies on the top of it, and I bring it out. And I just bring it by, like, each animal station for a little while, and then it parks inside the chicken tractor with the meat chickens because I feel like they're the ones that are really getting the brunt of it. So I take it out to the egg chickens first. They take what they want out of it, get a good old drink, get cooled off and feel good. I'll put new grubblies on it, and I take it to the goats. They do what they want to out of it. I put new grubblies in it again, and I take it to the chickens and leave it for them. 
because their little triangle is like an oven in their thing. But like I can't let them out because I'm afraid that they're going to squeeze through the gates or that like a hawk's going to come and get them. So uh, yeah. I figure that giant bucket with ice like parked in the middle of it will just cool the whole space for them a little bit. Or, you know, they can kind of cozy up to it and it'll help cool them off because, man, those birds look hot. Mm-hmm. I was thinking to myself, like, if I don't start butchering some of them soon, I'm going to have them dropping dead because of heat. Oh, yeah. And that would be super terrible because of how long I've been raising them for. Plus, the, that's just not a friendly way to pass. That's not no. That's not one of my farm goals. <laughs> <laughs> no. You don't want to do that. <laughs> no. You don't want to go through that. No. The, yeah. No. Um, but I didn't even think about, like, giving my goats mint. But they would probably really like it. They're obsessed with willow tree leaves. Like, they get so excited because, like, the willow trees are pretty close to their pen so they can see them. So they'll watch my husband cut some of the, like, the leaves down and bring them over. And they get so freaking excited. It's quite adorable. But because I know they like that, maybe they'll like some mint. So I'll try to put some of that in their water tonight just to see if it makes their hearts happy. Yeah, give it a try. You know, my goats have been pretty, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? They're very cautious about just about everything I give oh, them, yeah. unless it's grain. Grain is like the only thing they'll go apeshit for right now. They, yeah, I try to give them treats or I'll pull things for them. And they mostly just like, they'll gnaw at them for a second and spit them out. But they did pull some grublies out of the bucket today. They wouldn't yesterday, but they did today. And they also took a couple of the mint leaves, but just, like, a few. And, in fact, I ended up scooping some of the ice and a few of the things out of the bucket and giving it to them in their own bucket so that I could leave it for them since they're out on the pasture. And they don't don't really have a ton of shade. They've got some shade, but they don't have a lot. I just checked on them, though, and they were browsing at, like, the far end of it. So they seem to be happy. (laughs) Yeah. So one of the other things we've been doing over here to keep our chickens cool is we'll get watermelons and quarter them. And um, my husband will wrap them in like saran wrap and then we'll freeze them. And the chickens have been going apeshit over that too. Our littlest ones are pretty terrified of it. Um, So they just like (laughs) ran to the opposite side of their cage. So they didn't enjoy it, but everybody else seems really happy with that and it's a good treat because when it's frozen like that it takes them a little longer to get through it because if it's just like a a thawed one they they'll go through it in like five minutes it's insane they're obsessed with watermelon oh yeah yeah yeah, that's been a good one. one and then we have a bunch of like water buckets set up all over the property for them so they have easy access to it because they're out free ranging and there's plenty of shade and all of that but my husband got a little pool and that's full for them and so far they've just been drinking out of it nobody's gotten into it yet (laughs) but I've heard that chickens don't mind waiting in pools sometimes so I don't know maybe it'll happen maybe it won't maybe it's a little too high for him but he put this little like umbrella thing in the ground too (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and it's so cute. I think I'm going to have to do a little Grubbly's happy hour photo shoot, like a little pool party or something. So you guys will have to keep an eye out for that for on the drink oh and my farm gosh. page. That would be so <laughs> funny. You can just like stick a couple of Coronas like in the dirt next to oh, it. Yeah. And... <laughs> I don't know that I have Coronas, but I definitely have Coors Light. Um, that'll work too. Yeah. Just make yeah. sure those mountains are blue. Exactly. <laughs> nice and cold. Right. Yeah, and then I'll just feed them grublies out of, like, one of my drink and farm beverage vessels that I oh, have. Oh, there we go. I think they would like that. They That's like to feel idea. fancy. <laughs> they do. They certainly do. And that totally reminded me, we had our interview with Grubbly Farms this week. Yes. That episode won't drop before this one, so I don't want to give any spoilers uh, but we did learn one thing that we'll touch on briefly, and that's that they're kind of technically safe for human consumption. Yeah. <laughs> so I think Sam and I are going to have to go live in the group and have a Grubbly's happy hour together where we each try one. Oh, God. While we're yeah. giving them to our chickens. Do, so does that mean we get to do like a shot of something after we eat one? So like the shot is the chaser. <laughs> That's not a bad idea. Oh, we'll work out the details on that. But yeah, yeah, join our Facebook group. You'll get to see us eat bugs. 
know, Will that make if people you're, join? <laughs> yeah. If that if you're into that sort of thing, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> I know we need to do like a happy hour live in there. Um and you guys have been really great, the people that are already in there, like posting and interacting. It's been fun. I know I haven't done in there as much in there as I would like to, but yeah, I'm starting to get to the point where I feel like I have a rhythm so I can start like interacting and doing fun stuff in there. So we're getting there, but we appreciate everybody that's already in there and posting and being kind to each other. Everybody's getting along so far, so that's good. Yes, yes, that is good. Uh, mm -hmm. Everybody in there seems to be a good human, so I'm happy. Yeah, yeah, our questions are working so far. Woohoo! <laughs> Yay! I don't know. They let that one spam in. Yeah, but that's okay. That's gonna happen. Yeah. We haven't had any spam since then, so no. I've been like really looking over people's profiles before I let them in too. So. Oh, so you're like stalking our our group members? Yes, absolutely. I am. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yep, because they probably stalk me in some capacity, whether it's you know me oversharing on this podcast or Instagram or something like that. So, you know, it's just keeping it even. <laughs> That's true. Good point. Good point. <laughs> I know I was thinking about that. I'm like, when you have a podcast, like, you don't really have, like, I mean, there's, like, no secrets anymore. No. I mean, I don't share everything, everything. But <laughs> as far as farm stuff goes, I am pretty honest about everything. Oh, yeah. So. Yeah. As far as my farm goes. Yeah. Like yeah. you have to be. And in fact, I was just thinking to myself, I think it was yesterday. My days are all blending together now. I don't know what day it was. It No, yesterday was Friday. So it was Thursday when um, Wednesday night. Yeah. Wednesday was the day that I took those pictures. So Wednesday night, Darby, one of my goats, she like diarrhea this awful like bloody mucusy Aww. like poop and i looked at it and i was like coccidiosis there's nothing else that could have caused that yeah. in her that is exactly what it is i already have like the stuff to treat her you know on hand but i had to treat everybody because like as soon as one of them gets it i'm afraid that the rest of them are gonna get it from eating stuff near yeah. her poop mm -hmm. because there's just like no avoiding that unfortunately and they all are there any tricks to like getting your goats to stay out of their food bin? Because like they keep jumping in their food trough and going to the bathroom in it. And then all of the feed that's in it is wasted because they won't eat it once somebody's right. going to the bathroom on it. Well, it's kind of funny that you say that because one of the things I noticed from the lady I got our goats from, well, the majority of them from, she has it so the trough is outside. And then, like, along their, like, pasture or their fencing or whatever you want, want to call it. And it's on, like, the side we would stand on. And she just opens, like, a little gate when it's feeding time. And they stick their heads in and eat on the, like, human side of the fence, I guess is the best way for me to describe oh, it. Oh, that's then she a puts great it back idea. Down. Yeah. So we've thought about either doing something like that or just having, <laughs> cause I don't know what it's like for you when it's grain time, but they like to run out of the gate and then run back in and then they're jumping on us. So we've even thought of just like cutting a hole on the opposite side of the wall so we could dump it in and then go in and do everything else. Cause they just get a little crazy. They're yeah. very excited. They've been jumping all over me and they're leaving bruises like all over my yeah. leg too. So now I'm like all bruised up from goat hooves and from massaging <laughs> yeah i'm pretty black no, and blue, I... like from the waist down <laughs> <laughs> well it's true though with the goats and it doesn't get any better as they get bigger like my legs are constantly bruised and then we have all these little ducklings right now and their nails are so sharp so like my hands and my arms are just like scratched to high heaven and then i have bruises all over my legs and it's like it looks like i like get beat up every day because I essentially do, just by yeah, animals. You do, by your animals. So <laughs> yeah. it sounds like I'm doing their feeding wrong. So, and I'm not necessarily like, so yeah, I guess we did have feeding time because I would fill their trough in the morning and then I'd fill it again in the evening. Mm -hmm. But I think that's part of my problem and why my goats keep getting diarrhea is I didn't have like their feeding thing down very well. Like, because now they're going into the pasture. So 
I'm bringing out like a dish with some stuff in it out for them, but I really intend for them to be browsing when they're out on the pasture. That's my intention, not for them to just be eating feed. But then like I went to go buy them some new feed and my feed store was out of it. Aww. So I had to go. I, I had to go into the Hillsboro is another town that I go to a lot. It's on the opposite end, not towards Chillicothe. I had to go into Hillsboro anyways for something. So I was like, well, I'll just go to the feed store while I'm in Hillsboro and I'll be able to pick stuff up. Of course, they don't have the same brands either. So I learned a lot about feeding my goats this week. I just like I had to switch them because I was out out because I realized yeah. I was low on a Saturday morning. And when I went to my feed store to go buy it, they were closed already. Because they oh. are only open until noon on Saturdays, and I didn't realize that. And then it was Sunday, and nothing is open in my town on Sunday. And so <laughs> Monday, I go to get it, and they don't have it. So then I had to wait until Monday night. So yeah, I like totally screwed that up. So some of their diarrhea was probably dietary, because I switched their feed so fast. Um, but I feed them Timothy Hay pellets, is one of the things that I give them. Okay. And then I actually bought, this time, I actually bought a goat feed. I wasn't feeding a goat feed, but it's like a, I don't know, it's a bag, and it says goat feed on it. Hmm. And it has, like, protein, right. and it's an organic one. And so, yeah, I sprinkled a couple of those in it. And then, of course, they get their sweet feed also, but just a little bit of it. I try not to give them too much of that because that's the grain, and that's, like, their candy, and they don't really need right. that stuff. Um, but yeah, and then they were, then they have free choice hay. They always have hay available to them as well, like in a hay maw thing. Yeah. Or not a hay maw. That would be like where you store a ton of hay, like a hay rack. <laughs> I knew what you meant. <laughs> you I got you. <laughs> I got you. I don't judge. We haven't gotten any. I, I double checked our comments before we hopped on. We haven't gotten any nasty comments yet or bad ratings. So. Oh, good deal. We're good. Somebody left us a very nice comment like a day ago. So Oh yeah, I haven't seen yeah. that yet. Yeah, I just because I checked, but yeah, we're still five stars. Yay. So and we have nineteen ratings. I will admit I was one of the ratings and I did give us five stars. So Okay, and I was it's probably kind of like too. cheating. So. so but still like seventeen other people agree with us. So That's true. <laughs> I wanted to make sure it worked. I was testing it. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> We're, we're each other's best biggest fans it's fine <laughs> right so what do you feed your goats oh shit what's it called um uh, uh purina i think it's purina no i'm gonna have to google it because it's gonna bother me purina oh is it the meat maker goat. no okay it's the i don't know no 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 i was wrong i was wrong it is called, I just want to double check. Okay. It's Purina Noble Goat. Oh, Noble Goat. That was the one yep. that I was thinking of. Okay. And I guess it's a grower, I guess. I don't know. Um, But it's medicated. It has the, the thing in it that helps them not get calcification. Or no, I don't have the grower. So I have Noble Goat. It's not the grower one. It's a different bag. Now that I'm looking at this. But it has, uh, that's really going to bother me. Ammonium chloride. That's what it is. It has that in there. Um, and it's medicated. It helps prevent coccidiosis. Um, because of the ammonium chloride, it does. It helps reduce the um, ur urinary cal 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 calculi. That, yes. Thank you. Yep. <laughs> um, but yeah, they just get... Um, how many, I think they each get like a half a cup at night of that. And then, then in the morning they split two cups. No, they split one cup amongst themselves for the four. And then little toot gets a little bit in the morning and a little bit in the evening. So we don't go too crazy on that because there are a lot of people out there that say they don't even need grain unless it's like a pregnant dough. But I feel like, you know. That, that's what my goat breeder does and she's been successful successful for a long time so that's just what we've been feeding them and knock on wood we haven't had any problems yet so don't do that to yourself because that's what i did two weeks ago yeah. and i yeah. was wrestling goats to the ground shoving pepto-bismol down their uh, mouths the other night so i i really can't handle any more tragedy right now so i'm hoping that the universe or god or whatever you guys believe in 
um, just lets me have a break on that one because <laughs> I couldn't handle that right now. Right. Uh, but yeah, so they get that and then they get hay and they are like addicted to that. We rotated the girls into Toots area for a while today and little Toot, he gets hay too, but I think he thinks it's more fun to go in the big goats area and eat their hay. So when I went out there earlier, he was so bloated and I'm like, oh, toot. <laughs> you just had a good morning, didn't you? So <laughs> he was he was a very happy little goat. Oh, uh, yeah. But I still, guys, I still can't get over. And I even sent Bev a picture, I think, like a week ago. His balls are so big to the point where I just feel like it's not even normal. Like, because he's still so small. Like, I, I just, I don't, I don't know. I don't understand. You know how, like, have you ever seen before people driving the trucks and they have the balls on the back of the truck? Yep. And it, it just reminds me of that. It's just kind of like, ugh, my sweet baby goat. Why? Why? <laughs> Why are you growing into a little man? Right. And now I just can't even, like, nuzzle his head anymore because I know he's probably to the stage where he's, like, peeing on his face. And it's just, ugh. Boy goats, man. Boy, Boy goats. goats. Have you decided yeah. whether or not you're going to uh, breed him or keep him intact? Um, I think we're just going to keep him intact. I'm slowly trying to, like, get my husband okay with the idea of getting another boy, whether it's a weather or another intact that is like kind of closer to his age so they can hang out. Um, because he can see everybody through the fence, but I still feel like he would like to have a friend in his separate area, but I don't know, maybe he doesn't mind being an independent goat, but we, we try <laughs> to rotate them. So he hangs out with the boys and stuff. So he's not like, they just headbutt the whole time when they're out yeah. together, but you know, that's what goats that's what like they to do. do. Yeah. They like so, to do it. I'm going to go back to this feed really quick, just because I was just like looking it up. You would think that I would have done all of the research on this feed before I bought it, but I kind of bought it in a panic because I was right. like out of stuff. Um, and yeah, this totally replaces the grains that they need. So I don't oh. need to give them sweet feed while I'm giving them this because the grains that I have been giving them, it's like a specialty milled mix that my feed store has made. Um, I don't know. They call it Elliot's Crunch because that's the name of the feed store that I go to. It's Elliot's Feed Store. It's just like in my little town. It's just owned by a local family. Um, and it's really good. It's got like some molasses in it and like the whole corn and like whole grains and whatnot. And when I was looking at the feed store in the bigger town for like goat feed or I was actually just looking for alfalfa pellets. That was what I needed was alfalfa pellets and loose mm. alfalfa. And I walked by this and I saw this and I was like, organic goat pellets. I was like, I didn't know that you could feed goats pelleted food. So I like picked up the bag and I looked at it and it's like, yeah, it says it has everything that it needs in it. But I guess I never got to the part where I saw what it was made out of and it is just grains. So that totally replaces huh. that for me. So now I have two different things of grains for them. <laughs> No wonder my goats have diarrhea. I can't figure out how to feed them. <laughs> I mean, but you're learning, right? So right. That's yes. what matters. I am learning. And I've learned so much about how to feed my goats this week. Like, I learned that you're not supposed to put them out on the pasture, like, very first thing in the morning. You're supposed to have them eat first so that their rumen gets a kickstart before they go out and start browsing. Because mm -hmm. I guess, like, the what uh forage that they get in the morning it can cause scouring if their rumen isn't already sort of kick-started um what else did i learn oh yeah you're not supposed to change their food really fast but if you do need to change it fast you can you just need to give them a tums because that oh. will help take care of that yeah they'll totally eat a tums um i did not do that because i didn't know that i ran out of their food so i bought all this stuff and then it turns out i gave them too many grains they're gonna be better next week i've got this down now <laughs> Yeah, you know, you, but see, because of that experience, now you know so much that, you know, it's less likely to happen again, and you can help other people because you were able to handle that situation in, in a positive way. 
Yes. And one of the other things that I started doing too is I bought a can of ProBios and I'll put a link to that in the show notes so that people can see what it is and what I'm talking about. So when all of them started scouring, I gave them Pepto-Bismol because that's something that you can give them to reduce the scouring. Now, the only reason you want to do that is because you don't want them to get dehydrated by scouring too much, but you still have to figure out what the underlying issue is that's causing the scouring. So the Pepto-Bismol is just kind of masking it. You still got to kind of dig in and figure out what it is. Like, did I put them out in the pasture too soon so they had the wet forage before they were able to fill up on hay and some of their feed? Or are they sick? Have they gotten into something that they weren't supposed to? Like, there's just goat scouring is basically just like the beginning of of every goat disease that there is possibly out there. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Um, But the probiotics helps keep their tummy happy so that when their feed gets switched or when they have wet forage or when, you know, any of those other things happen, they, their, their stomachs can process it well and they don't end up getting ill from it. Did you use like the, um, the probios I have come in, like, it almost looks like a giant like syringe. No, I bought a powder, so I just sprinkled oh. it on their feed. Yeah. Nice. I mixed See, I have it. The... Oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. <laughs> oh, um, I mixed you go it first. in. I mixed it into a slurry when Sky was really not feeling good Wednesday night. Like I know I had one goat that was pooping bloody diarrhea, but Sky was like staggering and she just oh. didn't look good. And in fact, my friend came over. I had to have my friend come over to help me weigh them so that I could dose them with the Toltazerol, which is my coccidiosis treatment, because I wanted to make sure that I gave them the right amount for their weight so that I didn't underdose them, because an underdose won't kill all the coccidiosis. Right. Um, She looked at Skye, and she doesn't have goats, and she doesn't come over and see the goats that often. She sees me all the time. She doesn't see the goats as often. And she's like, that goat doesn't feel good. I was like, yeah, I know. Aww. I can tell. So I sat out there with her until midnight rubbing her tummy and I gave her some probios um, as a slurry. I put it into like a little cup and I sucked it into a syringe and just kind of syringed it in the side of her mouth and she swallowed it. Aww. I made that sound really easy, but really I sat on her <laughs> and wrenched her mouth open and shoved it down her throat. I had to wrestle with goats like a hundred times this week. I really wish you would have gotten some of that on video. That's really why you should have called the neighbor over. Right. Well, she did take one picture. The one that I posted (laughs) on Instagram was one that she took. She took that without me knowing it. I didn't know that she had taken that. And she sent it to me and she's like, here, I took something for your Instagram feed. (laughs) Oh, that's so, that is a good neighbor. (laughs) That is a good neighbor. (laughs) That's how I know I found a friend for forever. Yeah. Well, that's funny because when I I like to do pri the <laughs> I like to do pri probios that's the word I'm looking for um, for the goats like when we got new ones I gave everybody probios just because it's like new goat in your environment new poop all of that fun stuff um, but we get it in the like gel form and I just like slather it on a animal cracker so I know they're gonna eat it. And then they're good to go. Oh, that's a good idea. I still haven't gotten my goats to eat an animal cracker. I bought them two bags. I brought them in the house because I was afraid (laughs) that, like, mice were going to get in the barn and end up getting them. Um, Coop did eat one, and then he spit half of it out. My goats are weird. (laughs) My goats don't go right. Biscuit and Maya didn't really really like animal crackers until they were, like, mm, six to eight months old. So I think it's just an acquired taste over time kind of like kind of like coffee for humans like the first time (laughs) you drink it you probably don't like it or even like beer um but yeah you get used to it and then you just love it how dare you say that about beer i liked beer from the moment i tried it (laughs) (laughs) well i tried some really crappy beer the first time i tried it and i was like i don't get it (laughs) kind of like smoking you have to like make yourself do it for the first like month and then you're like all right now i'm hooked (laughs) Right, yeah, which is not great. But, you know, that's how it happens. Hey, Sam, do you know what time it is? It's Grubbly Happy Hour time. (laughs) Woohoo! I can hear the chickens running already just at the word grubbly. (laughs) Yeah, it's a good thing that mine are in their coop right now, because otherwise they would have, like, come and busted (laughs) through the window. (laughs) Yeah. 
my flock is like crazy excited about grublies. Um, so if you don't know what grublies are, grublies are black soldier fly larvae. So they're like an alternative treat to mealworms because, you know, like most mealworms are grown in China. I almost said made in China, but like worms aren't made. <laughs> well, right? technically they might be made in China <laughs> <laughs> when they're little squiggly parasite, gross looking things. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But grublies are made in America. And I especially love that they are sustainable because every pound of grublies you purchase equals 10 pounds of food waste that's been diverted from landfills and it offsets seven pounds of carbon dioxide. So I'm not really good at math, but Grublies just both sent us the trig tank, which is like five pounds of Grublies. And so that's a lot of good for the environment just from those two tanks. Oh yeah. And uh, when you order the one pound bags, those bags that the Grublies come in, those are compostable. So com compostable. Why do I have so much trouble with that word? I don't know. Yeah. Compostable. Yeah. yeah. You know, you put it in your <laughs> composter and it turns it into yummy dirt for your garden. There you go. Yay. Circle of life. Woo. <laughs> I like it. And I'm, I'm totally planning on using that tub to store like feed and things like that to keep the bugs out. So that tub will not be wasted because it's Oh glorious. yeah, no. It's way too handy of a tub. And when you give your flock grublies as a treat, you're also giving them like a really nutritious treat because it's really high in calcium, which helps like create stronger eggshells and healthier yolks and all of that good stuff. So it's a treat you can give to your chickens and feel really good about. Yeah, and there's a ton of protein in there, so it's good for their feathers, especially when they're molting and they're feeling super awkward about themselves and want to eat their feelings a little bit. Um, is that something you can <laughs> give them in good, good thing for that. <laughs> yes. So grublies are love. Yes. And because we love you guys and grubbly loves you guys, we can offer you a coupon code for 20% off. Use code WINE20, W I N E. Two zero at checkout and you'll get 20% off. Woohoo! Yes. <laughs> so did you get your necropsy results back? I feel like I saw that on Instagram that everything was in. Uh, Is that yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. So it's not great. Um, the full necropsy came back. It's either or it's a type of lymphoma that is either consistent with avian leucocus, huh, avian leucocus, ah, avian leucosis, or Marix. So it said right in the final report, like, we can figure this out further for you for an additional fee, which is like, awesome, great. You know, I already paid $190. So I'm like looking online at their fee schedule. I can't figure it out. So I call and say, hey, it said in here that you can do further testing to figure out exactly what it is. And I need to know exactly what it is. So she's like, okay, pulls up my encounter number. She's like, I'm going to have the vet tech or the vet call you back so you can discuss it. And I was on a conference call when the vet called back, but she called and left me a voicemail and said, Hey, we're going to do this for you free of charge. I mean, I think it was only going to be like 30, 40 bucks, but still, <laughs> I was still very happy. Um, that they were going to do it for free. Um, she was very nice about it. She's like, you don't have to call us back unless you have any questions. And it takes, you know, at, at the very most five business days. So I'll probably call like every day next week because I found out that my, these results were actually done Tuesday night, but I was like, maybe they meant it when they said 10 business days. So I'm just not going to call back till Friday. Cause then that'll be like 10 since the, you know, prelim was done. And, um, yeah, it was kind of funny cause I called Friday and they're like, Oh yeah, we have it. And I see the date on it. And then I get like a paper copy in the mail, um, yesterday too, or Friday, last Friday. But yeah, so basically, um, the main difference between leukosis and Marix from what I've read so far is leukosis is it's kind of it's a form of chicken cancer like Marix or um you can kind of think of it like an STD in a way because they will shed the virus um so Marix will shed the virus and it's spread through dust for leukosis it's more of a to me that one seems like a true STD to me because it's passed through mom to egg 
or they can get it from mating. Um, it doesn't pass through the air the same way as Merix does. Merix does not pass through the egg, but it passes through the air. Um, so both are awful. Um, both do not have a cure. Both make um, breeding and comp breeding and selling hatching eggs like super complicated, not super ethical in my brain anyways. Um, I I feel like it's really shitty because the perception of a lot of these diseases is that it's the owner's fault because they did something wrong. But honestly, with this, if it's leukosis. I could have gotten it from a hatchery chicken and like the hatchery is just not aware that that hen has it. Um, Merix, I could have gotten from like a wild bird just passing overhead and dropping something and one of the chickens being curious about it because I saw my little chicken buddy white ch chasing a butterfly earlier. So it's like they're so curious and they're trying to get into all the things and they're picking up dead mice and dead birds. It's like they could have picked it up from anywhere. I have an inkling it's probably Merix because for leukosis, it typically doesn't present in birds until they're at least 14 weeks old. Whereas with Merix, that usually happens with birds under 25 weeks old, but you can see it in birds that are a little older sometimes, even if they're vaccinated. Um, it just depends on the strain. Now, because I got most of my birds at a feed store and didn't ask, are they vaccinated for Merix? I'm not sure that they all are. The ones that we hatched are not, but if we do any more hatching, they will for sure be vaccinated. So that's another thing I'm going to have to learn. Um, maybe something that I can talk about at length at some other point. But yeah, so that's kind of where it's at. I know I just kind of verbally vomited everywhere, but I'm still learning and absorbing, still processing when my husband had to go to TSC yesterday and I got the results, I did a fair amount of bawling and screaming, kind of like that whole like cliche, like, why God, why? Like, it just seems so unfair that something that brings me so much joy and that helps with my anxiety so much can bring so much pain at the same time. Like, it just doesn't seem fair or just and there's like stigma around it and like, it just, it just it just effing sucks. So, um, I did talk to Shannon who, um, her Instagram handle is country fried Tina and we might be having her on in the future to do an interview about biosecurity and Merrick's and things like that because she has it in her flock too. And a lot of people won't talk about stuff like this because they're ashamed. So I want to be, I wouldn't want to say proud, but kind of like loud and proud that this is something that I'm going through because I think it happens to more flocks than we think and people are just too ashamed to talk about it, but we need to because it's a big deal. So yeah. I'll get off my, my soapbox now, but <laughs> yeah. And I'm really sorry that that happened. I wish that there was something I could do. I'm not very good at taking bad news from other people because I always want to like fix it because that's like in my nature. I'm like, I can't do anything about this. Right. So no, it just and that sucks. I, yeah, I'm, I'm like the same way too. And it's really unfortunate because we have too many roosters and we're probably going to have to call them. And my husband said he's going to take care of it because I just, I can't. Yeah. But I think at first that really upset me, but now I'm like kind of rationalizing it in my head that. It's going to be better for the flock in the long run and their stress levels if we're not out of balance with the rooster count. And the more stress that are put on the birds in the flock, the more likely they're going to get sick from something or anything or just even like heat exhaustion. Um, because chickens obviously <laughs> carry and spread disease in a, an insanely easy fashion. And you really got to watch it with them. So... I think like it's gonna suck and I actually had somebody message me and say you should really give your roosters to an animal sanctuary what? and I and I said but Merrix and leukosis is contagious I'm not gonna infect somebody else's flock because I don't have the heart to call them myself 
Yeah. And she said, oh, there are sanctuaries out there that, you know, will take diseased birds. And one, I've never heard of that before. And two, I don't know if in my heart and in my, like, moral whatever the F you want to call it, um, could send my birds that are may or may not be infected with Merrick or the Kosis to another set of birds that ha- might have God knows what to let them contract another disease to make another kind of prolonged awful death happen. Like, I'm not going to do that. If, if that's what floats your boat, that's fine. But, <laughs> but she wasn't even like, sorry for your loss. Like she was trying to tell me about like these natural remedies and send them on. And I'm just like, you know what? Like the majority of the people that saw my story on Instagram were so kind and so supportive and just wanted to reach out and send their love to me. And that's great. It's just, sometimes it's so hard because it's like there are people and maybe it's that whole like fix it mindset because I can have that too. And I really have to like monitor myself on Instagram and not like say, well, you, did you do this? Like mm-hmm. if some, if like an animal's sick. So it's like, yeah. I, I kind of get it. But when it's somebody you really don't know, like I just, I don't know. It, it just rubbed me the wrong way. And maybe it's because she's a vegetarian and didn't like the idea of calling an animal which I can totally understand, but I don't know. I've never even talked to her before today, I think. So I can see why that rubbed you the wrong way. So I posted that uh, second that second egg that Honey Shaker laid. That was another egg within an egg. It's super weird oh, yeah. that the same hen has laid <laughs> an egg within an egg twice in one month. Like, that's not common. And in fact, no. an egg within an egg is sort of uncommon as well. So yeah. the fact that I got two from her, I was like, wow, like something might kind of be wrong with her. I, I still haven't determined whether there is anything wrong with her. But when I posted it, I was just kind of like, I guess I left it too open ended in my post. I didn't really feel the need to explain all of the things that I do to make sure that the flock has everything that they need. But I got mm-hmm. more comments than I can count about giving them oyster shells or their eggshells back. And I was like, <sighs> like, I kind of... I, I didn't I didn't really know how to respond. For the most part, I just ignored those or like said some of the things that we do. But I was kinda like like no shit. <laughs> like the chickens need <laughs> No shit <laughs> Sherlock. Need, <laughs> they they need <laughs> calcium. We know that. That's how yeah. they make their yeah. eggshells. Like I guess if I was a new chicken keeper, I could see like wanting to extend that information you know, like in kindness, just in case I didn't know. But like, if you follow me on Instagram or if you've looked at my blog or anything, you know that I like did all the research on that stuff already. And I know I've only had chickens for a year, so I'm not like a chicken expert by any means, but like the basics I've got down. So I was a little offended at first, but then I also like stepped off of my high horse and was like, everybody's just trying to be nice and be helpful. So I stopped being mad and annoyed by it. But I was just kind of like, all right, I got to be more careful about like what I throw out into the Instagram realm because I can't let these things upset me because I don't, I don't have the bandwidth for that right now. Right. (laughs) No, but it's, it's kind of obnoxious because it's like, did, did I ask for help? (laughs) And like, do you think I don't know how to Google and that I'm not like, scrolling through Google and bawling my eyes out because basically my chickens have been handed a death sentence and I'm trying to figure out how to get work, make a like a workaround for this like it seems just like for some reason for me anyways it just seems like a, almost a personal dig and it's probably just because I'm taking it that way it's it's probably not what their intentions are but I I challenge people when they're scrolling through to think about how your words are going to be digested because you don't know what's going on with that person outside of what they're posting too, that you don't know, you know, if they're having issues in other areas of their, their life and that you suggesting something that wasn't even asked could set them off or really bother them. So it's like, you know, people <laughs> will offer their thoughts and prayers and all that stuff when bad shit happens. But sometimes that's all really people want when they throw it out there. I think even as females, you know, I know you're a fixer, but when I'm upset, like, I just want my husband to tell me it's going to be fine. Yeah. And that he's sorry. I don't want him to freaking fix it. (laughs) So same thing. Like when I put it out there, it's because I want to be open about it. 
and to spread awareness. And I don't need you to tell me that you're thinking of me or anything, but it, it's nice. You know, if you're going to say something, I would prefer that over, oh, did you try this, this, and this? And you should really do this, this, and this. And it's like I can barely think ahead to, you know, when I'm actually going to call all these roosters. So, yeah. Uh, on the flip side, though, when I posted Sky about her belly issues and how she wasn't feeling good, I actually did get an unsolicited, really good uh, piece of advice from somebody. Really? What was it? Uh, to make a mixture with Digest Zen. It's a essential oil from doTERRA. Oh, okay. Yeah, and I actually have some of it. Now, I didn't end up doing it because I'd already like thrown the kitchen sink at her. So I was like, I'm not going to put anything else in this goat's <laughs> belly. Uh, because it just seems like a bad idea, but, uh, I am going to go to her post and check out the ingredients that are in the rest of it. Um, and if I feel good about it, I'll post it in the show notes so that maybe everybody else can get to it if they're interested in it. I know not everybody's into essential oils, not everybody uses them. Um, but I have them here and I actually happen to have that one on hand and I use it sometimes when my stomach is a little iffy. So, Mm mm-hmm. It's worth a yeah, shot. I like oils. I have some of those too from that company. I have some from Melaleuca and some from other places too. I like essential oils, especially for like headache related stuff. It really helps. Mm-hmm. But yeah, totally. so I guess sometimes unsolicited feedback is helpful, but <laughs> only if it's you like... something uncommon, like yeah, something that's different and hasn't already Not... been suggested five hundred times. Not feed them grit and eggshells. Like, <laughs> are you kidding me? <laughs> but it did kind of get me thinking today how, like, this is not the organic farm that I had pictured in my head. Like, how do you mean? Because, like, in real life, like, it just, like, I, I couldn't wait for pumpkin seeds to get rid of my goat's parasites. Like, I couldn't wait for a natural remedy to clear up coccidiosis. Like, my goats needed medicine to get better Yeah. in these situations that I was in. And that's not to say that there isn't a natural remedy for those things. I'm sure that there is one out there. But I personally didn't have the time to try to figure out, like, how to apply that. Like, I just, like, my goats were sick and I needed to make it go away, like, as fast as humanly possible. So, like, the medicine was the way that I had to go. And I was like, no. man, like, I'm kind of, part of me, like, felt a little embarrassed, like, admitting that. And now I've, like, really admitted it, like, like mm-hmm. really loud and proud, apparently. We're being loud and proud this episode. We are. I mean, we are wrapping up Pride Month as oh, we, yeah. <laughs> it's just a different kind of pride. Yeah. <laughs> way different. <laughs> We're very prideful in our declarations that sometimes we just don't know what we're doing and we're doing the best that we can. Yeah. Yep, exactly. But I, another part of me also was like, no, this is important that I share how I feel about this and like how this isn't exactly like the way that I had intended to do things because then, I don't know, maybe it helps somebody else like not feel so guilty when something like that happens to them. I, I mean we see lots of bloggers on the internet that are able to have like totally organic farms and have all healthy animals and never have any type of sickness or disease. And it's possible that that really is the way that it is for them, but that just hasn't been my reality so far. Right. And I, I don't, I'm not calling anybody out in particular because I just, I literally do not know, but it makes me wonder because with social media, a lot of people will just show only the good and they'll hide the bad. So it's like, you really don't necessarily know what's going on with those people. Kind of like Photoshop, you know, you see the person, but you know, they've been touched up a little bit. Like I don't post a bad selfie. Like even the ones where I don't have makeup on, I I, I still get the right angle. You know what I mean? (laughs) So it's like, I still want to be comfortable with what I'm putting out there. It's just, you know, we're being loud and proud about the things that have happened and that it's not the way we wanted it to be or the way it sh- we thought it should have gone. You know, it's not all like freaking Cinderella with the birds helping her clean up and the mice and all that all the time. Um, sometimes it's goat shit in your hair. <laughs> Man, I could have really used some of those know. birds to help me clean up all the goat shit. 
I mean, Which, yeah, it would have really helped. Everybody's yeah. butt has to be wiped like multiple times a day to keep the flies off of them. Yeah. <laughs> So it's like, it's really like you have, you know, babies again. Yeah, it is. Butts. I'm very tired. I'm, <laughs> I'm feeling a little worn down this week. This was not my best homesteading week. Um, but all my goats are still alive, so I'm super pumped yeah, about that. Exactly. And I think you would have felt worse if you, if something would have horrible, like would have happened to one of them and they would have gotten really sick or died and you were just waiting on a natural remedy. Like, I don't think I could have handled that or processed it you know if i was just like no i'm only gonna do it natural and then they keeled over you know yeah i would have felt pretty terrible about that too my yeah yeah, my personal uh my personal meter could not have taken that but uh one of the other things i wanted to share too really quick was so i had dewormed everybody last week when uh coop was sick and it turned out that so the vet gave me it's like pan cure pan seer something like that it's p-a-n-c-e-r i believe um i know that i'm totally butchering how to say that but it's a type of dewormer but he only gave me one dose for everybody so everybody got one dose and that was it so it turns out that's that's usually a three to five dose medicine yeah so i think that was part of my problem was i had started worming everybody and then they didn't get the follow-up doses so I don't know, like Ooh. either they multiplied a little bit more, but yeah, everybody got treated for coccidiosis and got wormed this week because I just, I wasn't going to risk it. It was like, everybody has diarrhea. Everybody has something wrong. I don't know which one it is. I don't have the ability to figure out which one it is. So I'm just going to treat for both. And then if they don't get better, then of course I'll take them to the vet. But yeah, the guy from my feed store came and helped me worm everybody again. <laughs> Oh, that is a good feed store guy right there. He is. He's super awesome. He's been really helpful for me. And in fact, he came and he double checked Sky to make sure that she wasn't indeed bloated. And he said, nah, she's not bloated. She just doesn't feel good. I was like, oh, good. No wonder she was running from me while I was trying to rub her rumen. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I did also buy something for my first aid kit. It's like a goat bloat stuff. I'll oh. put a link to that in the show notes also. I will keep that on hand now. So that if anybody does get foamy bloat, I'll have something to use. There are things online that say you can use like mineral oil and some other things, but there's a product specifically for foamy bloat. I'm going to use that because I've heard mixed reviews on the mineral oil thing. So Okay. So uh, are you going to get a new goat vet if you can? Yeah, I'm working on that. I yeah. am. I'm going to try to do that. Yeah. Yeah. I you know. Maybe somebody that just sees more, understands your relationship with your goats. Yeah, I think what it is is he's used to only dealing with show goats, which, you know, people only have for a very short amount of time um, and just need to keep healthy long enough to, like, like go to market or go to the show and then go to the market. So, yeah, it's a different, it's a different realm. So I'm not overly surprised by that. I have to go see him one more time because uh, Coop has a has a horn that's growing back. There's a word for it. Oh, I forgot no. what it's called. But yeah, it's growing towards his head. So he's going to burn that off for me so that Coop doesn't end up getting impaled yeah. by his own horn. <laughs> yeah, that would not be good. I was kind of hoping it would be like a unicorn situation where he was just really a unicorn and it was like growing straight out. Oh, uh, if no, it was growing it straight out, like I would have left it. But no, it was curling. it's curling back, so... And he doesn't I like thought... it when I tug on it. <laughs> Aww. Yeah, I probably wouldn't like that either, though. Yeah. No. <laughs> I saw on Facebook today, somebody took pool noodles and put them over their goat's horn. So, because they, like, had their, they didn't disbud them, so they had pool noodles over them. Like, cut, obviously, because he kept, like, headbutting the other goats with them. That sounds like a genius idea to take care of that. (laughs) While I was dosing everybody with all that medicine, though, I was super thankful that my goats didn't have horns. Yes. Yeah. That could have been bad. (laughs) Yeah. I would have totally lost an eye for sure. Oh, yeah. I didn't even think of that. I just thought, like, in general, like, the getting, like, we were talking about bruises earlier. But no, you're right. Oh, that's scary. (laughs) Right. (laughs) I've also seen people put tennis balls on like the tips of them. Oh so my goodness, that too. that'd be pretty funny. I'd like to see that. Maybe I'll yeah. look one of those up so we can get a laugh. Well, we should you end should. this uh, podcast on a high note. I know that Sam has some new babies on her farm. 
And that sounds like yes. a perfect way to end. We have baby bunnies again because apparently Sam doesn't understand how reproduction works in bunnies. <laughs> oh my gosh. Bunnies are just really hard to sex, guys. Like, I thought Coco was a girl, and then I caught Coco humping Vino. And you're like, and then, gosh darn it. Yeah, and then I just magically walked out last week. Me and Bev recorded on Sunday, and I walked out, and I was like, I have a sneaking suspicion that Vino had her babies, and then I look in there, and yep, there are four babies. So we separated her from Coco. Because I didn't want him trying to, like, mate with her while she was recovering. Um, I had checked the night before, too, and she, there were there was nothing in there. But when I opened it on Sunday, like, <laughs> she went to work Saturday night because there were, like, fr- like bunny fur everywhere. Oh, my goodness. Um, and they're, they're quite adorable. So that's so nice. Like, it, you just really do see the circle of life when you're on a farm. And you have multiple, you know, a variety of animals. So while my chickens, you know, I'm really hoping we don't have any more death. We had one die this past week. I'm hoping that's like it and everybody else will just kind of be okay. It's really hard to say, but it is super nice to have some new life on the farm. And we'll end up selling them in about seven weeks when they can be separated from mom. So that'll be really nice. Well, that's exciting. Congratulations, yeah. Bunny Mommy. Oh, thanks. Yeah, I think I now that I know who's what, we're going to be doing separate um, separate houses. So <laughs> This is how Sam sexes her bunnies. She just puts them together yes. in pairs, and the ones that mate, then they get separated. <laughs> but, but the really nice thing is, is one of a, the chain feed stores around us um, is constantly looking for rabbit vendors. So I know I have a reliable source that I can take them to. Oh, good. And we make we make about I think it's about like eleven dollars a bunny, and I don't think they make very much selling them. But people have to buy everything to take the bunny home. Yep. So it works out. It's you know. Well, that I mean, sounds like a pretty bad. good gig. Like, you yeah, know, this chicken thing doesn't work out. The bunnies. Yeah. So good. Well, and now the the beautiful thing about the leukosis and the merics is that it does not spread to ducks. Oh, good. So my ducks are fine, and I've really been wanting to get Sebastopol geese. So if I can't breed chickens, I might just bite the bullet and invest in some good Sebastopol geese because they're very expensive, but they're oh. so fun and I want them. So I might just do that. Um, my husband bought me a pool <laughs> as my like, <laughs> I've been like, you, I, I've been begging for a pool basically since it was like hot as balls on Memorial Day. And I think when I called him and I was like, oh my gosh, these are the results. Um, yeah, he just went and it's not it's not a big pool but it's enough for me to like you know float around on my unicorn floaty that i got a while ago if you can so. float in it it's a big enough pool it sounds oh, perfect yeah. it's 16 feet and you know when it's just the two of us most of the time i think the kids are gonna lose their shit when they see it so that'll be fun oh i bet that'll be super fun because i told them do not tell them like i want them to i want to see how long it takes them to realize it's there when we have them next weekend because nice. i think it'll be fun so <laughs> that will be fun but yeah so that was my that's my pity pool pity I can pool. have a pity par- <laughs> i can have a pity party in my pity pool <laughs> i like that that sounds awesome yeah so maybe he bought me the pool i'll buy myself some geese and we'll call it we'll call it a day <laughs> there we go see we always figure out a way to make ourselves feel better on the farm <laughs> yeah just buy more animals just just a different <laughs> variety <laughs> <sighs> Well, thanks for listening to this episode, guys. Yeah. um, You know, we don't say it very often, but, you know, we drink and we farm things. That is what we originally named this. Oh, yeah, that is. Well, we do drink and we do farm. Yeah. Things. Lots of things. Lots of things. And we give zero clucks. Yeah. We do all that. And if you're not following us on Instagram already, like, what the hell? Go do that. <laughs> Find us at Drink and Farm. And you can use hashtag Drink and Farm while you're drinking and farming things. And we will fo- feature at least one a week. I'm starting to think we, we're getting, like, this is kind of picking up traction enough where maybe 
we'll do another date other than Thursday. We'll see. Or I'll start featuring your men more often in the story. So thank you guys for participating in our hashtag. We're glad you think it's super fun and that everybody so far has been drinking and farming responsibly in those posts. I really appreciate that. Yes. Yes, we appreciate that. Yes. And like Bev said before, go join our Facebook group because it's fun in there. Just type in we drink and we farm things and the group will come right up. There we go. Yeah. All right. So drink. Farm. And and give give zero zero clucks. clucks.